What is up there? Welcome to a brand new video on 414 Anime. In today's video, we are looking into the latest chapter of the Shield Hero manga, chapter 76. This chapter is super hype, man. We've got action, we've got some more information about the waves, and a hench AF moment at the end that I am so psyched about. As always, make sure you smash that like button to let me know you want more Shield Hero videos. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when new Shield Hero videos go live on the channel. As well as that, for more Shield Hero videos, why not check out my Shield Hero playlists for character facts and Shield Hero lore. And of course it goes without saying, but there will be Shield Hero spoilers here for the anime onlys, whereas the light novel readers can bask in their, their all knowledge of the story. So you have been warned, and with that being said, grab yourself a beverage as always, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. You know this chapter was titled The Otherworldly Wave, and yeah, we are thrown straight into the action as we are mid-wave here against the boss, which is a giant elephant-like motherfucker. I love these panels here. The action it depicts is true shield hero brilliance as Kazuna is up against the boss and now Fumi jumps in to block an attack defending Kazuna. In true counter attacking style, Kazuna jumps from behind now Fumi and goes on the offensive as she turns to him and says, as expected of the shield hero, as now Fumi grins back. I love this for the fact of how confident they are in this wave. Enough so that they are having fun and also for the bond that Kazuna and now Fumi have forged during their time together. It's awesome teamwork and really sick to see. We also see Roftalia, Philo and Risha fight alongside Lark, Therese and Glass. You know, it's so amazing to see these lot fighting on the same team. It's hype, man. Roftalia mentions that she never thought they'd end up helping the enemy side of the wave, but as you know from the last chapter, I am so for this. I love these guys working together. It's, it's awesome. Now, the next few pages are really interesting as they tell us that when the dimension crack is active, both worlds are connected, meaning the heroes can use the powers they have obtained from the two worlds. Glass states that if one keeps raising their levels in both worlds, of course they'll become strong during the waves. Now, this information is really interesting, but not for the fact that the heroes become super strong in the waves, meaning that defeating them is easier, but for the fact that this is a real technical advantage over the other world's heroes when it comes to taking them out, especially if they have no knowledge of this information. This, of course, explains why Glass, Lark, and Therese were on a completely different level from the other heroes back in Kalmira. Well, now, Fumi, anyway, we all know Motoyasu, Ren, and Iski are far too useless. Far too useless. After the wave, we move on to this world's capital, I presume, and we get a more political tone here. Kizuna is lecturing Glass, Lark, and Therese about the fact that this was her first wave and the only thing that tried to claim her life were the monsters, not any other heroes from another world. This is important information because Kizuna is a holy hero of this world, whereas the others are vassal weapon wielders, bar Therese, of course. Kizuna is really against the legend that the heroes of the other world must be killed in order for their own world to be spared and saved from the waves, but Glass isn't willing to take any chances. She says that before they can do it, we have to kill them first. She speculates that the enemy's side have no knowledge of the true reason of the waves and that nobody really understands it. Kazuna does not like this and an argument breaks out between her and Glass that reveals one of the most cutest moments of the series and a real aww moment for Glass. Glass is reduced to tears defending her side of the argument, revealing just how much Kazuna and her comrades mean to her. It gives us so much more of an understanding into Glass's character, who is usually cold and to the point. Now, I'll be honest with you here, Glass has looked pretty cute since the Spirit Turtle incident, but this one panel of her is cuteness overload. Now, I really love seeing this more vulnerable, more human side to her. Now Fumi, however, finds it amusing and outright laughs at her like the lovable asshole that he is. Now, I, I say asshole, he is more relieved to see this more human side of Glass and understands her motives so much clearer. I think it was also part shock at seeing Glass make that face too, as he said, so even you can make that face too. Of course, Raftalia tries to call Naofumi out, but he's like, no, no, let me have this moment. 
Now Fumi says that he too has people he wants to protect and he has no intention of being killed. Glass took this the wrong way and thought it was a threat, so she stands up to Now Fumi before Kizuna grabs her by the cheeks, telling her that she has misunderstood the point and that it's Glass's way of thinking that she is really angry at. Now, can I just say that I love this panel. Glass was this big, bad, mysterious villain type when we first met her, and now she's just being put in her place. It's just, it's just really fun to see. So the story moves on to more speculation about the true meaning of the waves, focusing on the heroes being teleported to the wave, including the heroes that can't fight, such as Naofumi. Now, our bunny boy Ethnobolt then shows up saying that the only thing he has worked out from this wave is that now Kazuna is back from the infinite labyrinth, the countdown to the next wave on the dragon hourglass has increased, which gives merit to the theory of killing the other world's heroes. Of course, the less heroes in the world, the more frequent the waves will become, and without anyone to defend the world from these waves, it's only going to end in destruction of the world, right? <laughs> Kazuna continues to protest. You know, she is more angry that Glass, Lark, and Therese travel to Naofumi's world to kill the heroes there instead of the one who had tried to kill her. That being Kyo. Ethnobol also reveals that he had found some books all written in an ancient language that hold information on the true meaning behind the waves. He says it will take time to decipher, but the mysteries and truth they hold will be invaluable to them. Next up is the hype. Now, Therese is making a small commotion on the floor, which grabs everyone's attention. They all ask if she is all right, and she apologizes, saying she is simply relieved. Everyone kind of wonders what she is relieved about before she bursts out with, as I thought, I really didn't want to kill Naofumi. Log then turns to Naofumi, reaches out his hand and says, kiddo, let me apologize. Classic Naofumi shrugs it off saying, you know, it's no big deal and said that if he was in his position, he would probably have done the same thing. He does say he wants one thing, and that's everyone's cooperation in tracking down Kyo and taking back what he had stolen. Now, everyone turns to Glass in suspense. What will she think? Will she agree to this? She says, fine. And oh my God, this is super amazing. I've wanted these lot to be on the same team for so long. And now they finally are. I cannot wait to see what these guys are going to achieve. You know, I could go on about this, but if you watch the video for the last chapter, you'll know my feelings on this subject. All I will say for now is that this is hype AF. These lot work so well together, and you know, the beginning of this chapter gave us a slight insight into the amazing teamwork, the power, and the mutual respect they have for one another. Now, the chapter ends with an image of Kyo that looks like he is up to some sort of cloning activity, and you know, I cannot wait to see what Naofumi's group have in store for him. And there we go, that was chapter 76 of The Rising of the Shield Hero. I am so pumped from this chapter, I honestly can't wait to see what comes next for these lot. I'm really looking forward to the combat scenes, and I really want to see some banter between these lot, especially, especially between Naofumi and Lark, man. You know, these two just seem like they would be such bros and I, I need this i literally need this but what did you guys make of this chapter are you as hyped about this as i am obviously light novel readers know what's coming next but it's really exciting to see regardless anyway if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more shield hero content just like this make sure to smash the like button and share this video with a fellow fan of the series of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell there is plenty more shield hero videos coming and i don't want you to miss a single one as always a huge shout out to warwick animator 22 brian blake andrew bs tuna zintag Emlyn, Kivasei, Cody, and Chris for supporting me on Patreon. Don't forget to head on over there yourselves. Check out the amazing rewards, including a super special awesome exclusive series on Toka from Data Live for Patreons only. But that is it from me. Till next time, my fellow weebs. Peace.